How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It's not just Friday on the show, it's Black Friday. You know what that means. We got a lot to talk about today, including our annual sale, but I'll get to that later. A lot of news. We weren't on the air yesterday. So we've got updates on Jim Ross and his skin cancer treatment. The Young Bucks. A lot of news on the Young Bucks, including a correction on the story, I might add. We've got WWE's new... I almost said New Japan. Their old Japan television deal. Well, they don't have it anymore. It has been uh, it has been canceled. GCW ticket sales for the Hammerstein Ballroom Show. They are sold out. We talked about this on Wednesday. And I said, if you want to go, you better get tickets now. And uh, if you didn't, too bad. There are no tickets left. And the place is going to be packed. Because normally, uh, they put about 1,800 people into the building And uh, this one was set up for 2,025, I believe. And so significantly more. About about 200 more tickets than were ever put in for a Ring of Honor show at the Hammerstein Ballroom. So they're packing them in for this show. And uh, completely sold out. We've got updates on War Games, AAA Mega Title. And, of course, we have full results from the... AEW Dynamite show and the NXT 2.0 show. We talked a lot about NXT 2.0 the other day. I don't know much we talk about that, but we should talk about Dynamite. Lots of stuff happened there. If you want to, text us here today. I don't think we'll have time for phone calls, a lot of news, but the text message line, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Lots to get into. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Yes, if you're a freeloader listening right now, it's Black Friday. And this is your opportunity for the next nine hours to jump on WrestlingObserver.com, sign up for just $3.99, and get unlimited access to everything for $3.99. Site is normally $12.99 a month. But for $3.99, holy smokes, what do you get? Well, you get 13,000 archived shows. You ever listen to a show and go, man, that was cool, but I got to wait till tomorrow for the next show? Well, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You can, you can listen to a show, go into the archives, listen to another show, and another show, and another show, and another show. I don't think you could ever listen to 13,000 shows. But if you'd like to try, we have had some people that said, man, I started listening to the... I started back at the first Brian and Vinny show. I listened to every single Brian and Vinny show. We've had people who have done this. It's taken them years. But if you want to try, uh, you can't do it in a month, but you can try. You can go up and listen to, uh, to all of these shows. We've got the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, back issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Every show that we do goes in the archives. So if you miss Observer Live or Brian and Vinny show, Observer Radio, Figure Four Dailies, I think Mike does a show. I think it was the first actual alternative. Is that what they call it? The original, the original alternative? The alternate. Alter- alternate. Yes. I like Back the original the alternative. There, was, there, there was just at one time, folks, if you can believe this, with all of these great shows on the site, with Carl Stern, with Josh Nason, with Les Thatcher and Vic Sosa, all of those shows that we have on the site, the original one was the Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare, the longest running show. Uh, who uses Japanese wrestling as their muse. We talk about a lot, of, a lot of other stuff as well, too. But, yes, it was the very first show, however many years ago it's been now. I mean, granny shows, shows with Dave, the Christmas show, all of these are in the archives, and you get 100% access. If you were one of those folks that signed up in 2005 and you've been paying for the last 15 years, man... If you're a freeloader, you could for three ninety nine you could jump in and get everything those people have been paying for since two thousand five. And can you imagine you would think about not doing that? I can't. What a deal. But anyway, check it out, wrestlingobserver.com from now until nine Pacific midnight Eastern. So there's not a lot of time left. So jump on right now and and join the fun. Next time you're on a on your commute and just bored listening to some horrible podcast. You can listen to a different kind of horrible podcast every single day. 13,000 of them for just three ninety nine. 
Let's get some news. We'll do more plugs later. Due to 22 consecutive daily radiation treatments to treat skin cancer, Jim Ross is off AEW Dynamite until hopefully December 29th, according to the legendary announcer. He announced news Thursday on Twitter. Tony Khan tweeted in support of Ross shortly thereafter. It's unknown who will replace him in the third seat alongside Excalibur and Tony Schiavone. At the end of Wednesday's Dynamite, Ross's sign-off indicated he was going to be missing some time, which he hoped would not be the case when he initially got the diagnosis. He had two spots successfully removed from his back on Monday. Radiation will address the initial diagnosis of skin cancer found in a growth above his ankle. Second about with skin cancer. So obviously all of the best to Jim Ross. We've also another AEW news, the Young Bucks. I've got a, I've got a, uh, here, here's the story. It says here, one of the AEW's most popular teams since its inception are sticking around a bit longer as the Bucks have signed a new long-term deal with the company. That's actually not entirely accurate. They were signed through 2024, and they signed two-year extensions. So, not really a long-term. They're long-term now, but they were long-term before. Anyway, they signed two-year extensions through 2026. So they're not going anywhere, but they also weren't going anywhere anyway. But uh, they've been off TV for a while. Nick's got a bruised heel, and uh, he should be good to go very soon. Matt was actually not injured, but they did the storyline saying they were both not medically cleared after the the pay-per-view match. But I expect that they should be back soon. But that's the update there on the Young Bucks. The executive vice presidents of AEW are not going to Raw or SmackDown. Shocking development Or NXT. There. Feels like a uh, NFL head coach or something. Give them a two-year extension, even though they've got two years left to go on their contracts. But, uh, yeah, well, hey, look, for whatever the reasoning that happened, if there was a re- renegotiation there where they're getting something else out of that or whatever it is, I-, I don't know. But good for them. I mean, that's really the bottom line is no matter what the, anybody thinks of Cody outside the ring, we talked about this last uh, last week with the Young Bucks, Cody and Kenny Omega, all of them trying to set themselves up for life outside of wrestling, even though it's obviously in wrestling, you know, thinking a lot bigger and trying to secure their their families and their futures. Told you guys on Wednesday, if you have not got tickets to GCW, the Hammerstein Ballroom, and you want them, get them. And just like I warned you, don't lose out on this three ninety nine dollars deal. Some folks, in fact, listen to me, and some, some folks, they're just, they're left out. <laughs> the show is sold out they put well they don't have to be left out i guess they can buy them on the secondary market but well they're like very, they're going to be paying a pretty penny for them the secondary market get in price is currently 90 dollars, which actually is the highest of any pro wrestling show where tickets are on sale right now toronto christmas week show 79 canadian day one pay-per-view from wwe 62 dollars aw winner is coming 59 royal rumble 40 dollars and the two days of WrestleMania, $35 and $40. So they're actually, GCW on the secondary market is currently asking, or they're, they're going to be getting double the secondary market prices for, uh, for <laughs> WrestleMania. 2025 in the building. Uh, normally there's about 1825 in the Hammerstein, so they're, gonna, uh, they're packing them in like sardines for this show. And uh, this is going to be... I mean, I don't know what the gate's going to be, but it has to be the biggest gate ever for GCW, probably by a substantial margin. So there you go. I would figure as such. I'm not sure what those, you know, the the, the early blood sports shows or how, whatever, any of that stuff may have done, the spring break shows and all that. But they were charging. I think the lowest price was 45 and then the highest price was a little over 200 So, you know, with selling 2,025 tickets, you know, odds are it's probably their biggest gate. Uh, they they better have their biggest gate, considering the cost of running that building is obscene. I mean, Ring of Honor didn't run it for several years just because it is such an expensive building to rent, and I'm sure that did not go down in the last several years, even with COVID. It's a prime piece of real estate, and I guess really the bottom line is you are running it so you could say that you ran it. You are making a statement by running there. This is like there, you know, a lot of comparisons to ECW is barely legal. And I I don't, it, it, the errors are so different that it's tough to really call it that. But as far as making a statement, it absolutely, you know, you can put it on that par. WWE holding a fan vote 
to determine the two participants for this year's men's war games advantage ladder match. So it's it's uh it's we didn't talk about this because I hadn't seen the main event yet, but the war games show is going to be Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Pete Dunn, and L.A. Knight against Carmelo Hayes, Tony D'Angelo, Grayson Waller, and Braun Breaker. So we have a heel on the babyface team and a babyface on the heel team because what they decided they wanted to do is it's old school versus new school. Wait a second. The New Bloods and the Millionaires? It's the New Blood versus the Millionaires Club here, except the... uh, the millionaires are the baby faces in this example, which they actually may have been in uh, in WCW as well. They kind of were. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the battle lines have been drawn, so there's going to be a fan vote. The polls are open. You can vote on one member of each team to throw down to determine the war game's advantage, which is very interesting because uh, one would think that the fans are going to vote for Braun Breaker versus Ciampa. And if I'm NXT, I'm not doing that match as a random man advantage match for for war games i want to hold that off until later on so it'll be interesting to see if they if they allow that to win if they sway the vote what they do gimmick it up yeah back in a moment everybody observer live is here wrestling observer live mike simber vv also wrestling observer.com you know if you sign up for our 399 special <laughs> You will be able to listen to the Figure Four Daily Show with Lance Storm that we're doing this afternoon. Podcast form. If you want to watch the video, it's video.f4wonline.com, which we could not run a sale for out of our hands. But one way or the other, today it's myself and Lance. And Lance does not celebrate Thanksgiving, as you're well aware. Well, hey, because he has second. nothing to be thankful for. That's not true. He's just a Canadian who celebrates it a month earlier. Now, my my point here is that he spent uh, much of the last few days watching wrestling and coming up with topics. And one of the topics, we normally review Impact Wrestling. And uh, this week, Impact Wrestling was Wrestle House. You guys ever watch Wrestle House? No. What is that? I'll talk about it on the Figure Four Daily Show with Lance Storm coming up at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, only for our top-tier YouTube subscribers. Podcasts available at WrestlingObserver.com for those of you signing up for our new Black Friday three ninety nine dollars special. If you miss out, you missed out. So Triple you're A. Gonna, so you're not going to explain this now? Is nope. this like a, a Camp Leapfrog thing? Is it like a, uh, what Camp was that Leapfrog. show they had on... Yeah. What are you talking so, about? Well, they, it's like the indie wrestling thing. Is it a bunch of wrestlers in a house and they wrestle? Is it like UFC? And hey, You'll have to find out, what brother. <sighs> you got a subscription. If not, it's three ninety nine today, so get on it. I'll check it out. The multi-man match for the vacant AAA Mega Championship at Triple Mania is now fully set. This was originally going to be Vikingo versus Kenny Omega for the title. And uh, the match is now... Vikingo in a five-way versus Samurai, Del Sol, Jay Lethal, Bobby Fish, and Bandito. Wow. Now, far be it from me to book a match. <laughs> oh, yeah? But uh, if I recall the story correctly, Kenny Omega was supposed to drop this title, this AAA title, several months ago. But uh, because of the timing with the all-out pay-per-view, Christian beating him for the Impact title, they decided not the right time for him to do another job. So he didn't lose the title. So that tells me he was surely going to lose the title to Vikingo here on this show. Now, maybe they figure, well, everybody knows that, so we'll throw in a curveball. But I think that Vikingo is going to win the AAA Mega title at this show. And then when Kenny Omega is able to return, he will face Vikingo and lose to him because Kenny Omega very much wanted to wrestle Vikingo and probably drop the title to him. And since that's not happening, this is an easy way to uh, solve all of these problems. So that is the five way for the AAA mega title. Kane Velasquez also working the show. He teams with Psycho Clown and Pagano to face LA Park, Reyes Scorpion, and Taurus. Should be a big show. Taurus? FTR versus Lutz Brothers. <laughs> Black Taurus. <laughs> it could be a Taurus, but you know. All no, right. it's Taurus. Taurus. Yes. 
I'm not wrong about this. All right. Huh? You're calling him Black Taurus. I'm the one who's wrong. Of course okay. you're wrong. You it's probably fine. call him Kazuchka. <laughs> There's a lot of things. You probably call him Ishii. Mm-mm-mm. Screw all of these up. Barry. Listen, I'm a professional. I'm a professional linguist. So oh, yeah? I'm going to tell you how to pronounce these names, everybody. Are you a cunning one as well? When you're a professional linguist, you can decide how to pronounce all these names. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, T-bar. Yeah, I, I, oh, you, now you're telling me I pronounced T-bar wrong? It well, is. there's the, there's the letter T in the word bar. Shankly. Well, that's his problem. <laughs> oh, what's <laughs> He named himself after a finisher. <laughs> Let's look at some of the feedback here. We'll do the... Uh, I want some time to do this. Uh, eh, we'll do it now. Let's talk about this uh, this Dynamite show. It was a good one. That takes precedence over this uh, NXT show, which I, I largely... I actually only talked about one thing on NXT, but I could talk about more if I wanted to. They want you to say daddy. Say daddy again. Nope, They'd not happening. It. Yeah, apparently... I don't know if it's because of me, okay? I'm not going to take credit for this. But I couldn't help but hear within the last uh, few hours... That uh, they may now be backing away from this daddy's girl character. So we'll see. I'm not sure how many vignettes they already shot, but uh, if if she's no longer talking about daddy, uh, you'll know why. You heard it here first. <laughs> Is this there's a, some sort of subreddit somewhere just dedicated to of you saying that? Of course, not there? me. But I mean, come on. There's subreddits devoted to this character. Golly, can you imagine? 76-year-old guy is 60-year-old henchman coming up with a, a daddy's girl character. With the other henchmen producing the vignette. I always love they, when there's they, a character that a I talk girl. about. I talk about a character like this, and somehow I'm the bad guy. Every single time. Get off my back, everybody. I didn't gotcha. write this stupid Imagine character. Imagine if she hooks up with Tony Nipples. I didn't shoot a, a vignette where we only show her her lady parts, but not her actual face. I didn't come up with that. It was bare breast and bare legs. Works for everything. Anyway, we had a CM Punk MJF segment that opened up the show. And uh, this was a great promo battle. And it went a long time. Uh, Dave thought it should have gone 13 minutes. He had the exact amount of time it should have gone. (laughs) It's always funny when he does that. It went like 18 minutes. He goes, would have been better 13. Not 12, but not 14. 13. (laughs) I always think it should go just as long as it should have gone. You know what I mean? But I don't, exactly, even, I don't yes. even always know what that means. What did you guys think? Was it too long? I thought it was great. I think it was maybe, maybe a little bit too long, but who cares? Well, I'll I mean... say this. Objectively, objectively, okay, ob- this is not subjective. Subjectively, I liked it. Objectively, it was too long because they had to cut time from other matches. Yeah. So when yeah. you have to cut time from other matches, objectively, it was, in fact, too long. Yeah, but Hindsight subjectively, I liked them out there yelling each other for 18 minutes. Absolutely. Look, and that's the bottom line is, you know, was it uh, entertaining enough where did it damage the rest of the show? No. Did it, in hindsight, did it go too long? Was it scripted to go too long? And then maybe it carried over too long with the, you know, the waiting for the crowd reactions and things like that? Yeah, probably it did. But at least it was a noble attempt. And when you put both of those guys in the ring, you know, by themselves, let alone with each other, you know, forget how, yeah, it could have gone an hour. You know, it could have gone five, min- you know, five minutes. Who cares? It ended up being great content that we're going to have, you know, to play off of going forward for a long time. These are going to be in video packages with these two against each other for as long as they're against each other because they zung the hell out of each other, and I thought it was great. The line of the promo was undoubtedly when CM Punk called him a less famous Miz. God. That's cold, bud. He's Ugh. MJ. If, if I would have been, if I would have been in that ring and CM Punk called me a less famous Miz, I think he would have had his his third MMA fight, <laughs> or is it fourth? Like that's that's too low. That is low. That's a low blow right there. Cool. So they got a little. Uh, they got in a uh, kerfluffle and everything like that, and. MJF Especially failed. insulting to MJF because he has no mercy. Well, of course it's insulting to MJF. God, but I mean, really, when you really start to think about that, it's like, man, not only did he call you a less famous Miz, you don't even have a Maurice. All you got is a scarf, brother. Like, no, we don't know. We, we don't know. Trash. We don't know whether he has a Maurice or not. You take that scarf and you know all the tears you have from not having a Maurice. You can use it to soak up that and that like running spray tan that you just can't get right. And I just want this to stop. Forget about MJF. All of professional 
professional wrestling. Listen to me. Okay, I'm an Italian. I tend to like dark skin. I love tans. It's great. It's a great aesthetic. It's a great aesthetic for anybody on TV, in my opinion. But stop with the spray tans. If you can't naturally tan, then stop with the spray tans. Because everybody turns out orange. If you can figure out a way you can do this where you're actually, you know, brown or tan, great. If you're just going to be orange and it's going to drip everywhere as you sweat, please stop. Please. MJF, if you're listening right now, Mike Sempervivi requests that you stop spraying a tan on. No, so uh, what please, I'm saying is figure out a way to not have it drip all over your well, clothes. Well, brother, if there was a everywhere. way to do that, then there wouldn't be a problem now, would there? Well, look, he's gotten a lot better. Remember that time he had like four different shades? So, I mean, his blending has gotten a lot better, but still, I mean, it's kind of sad out there. He's trying to play out CM Punk for looking like a bum, and he's out there with like, you know, tears of orange dripping off of him like a Kardashian. CM Punk beat QT Marshall. They didn't cut time from this match, which they could have. Well, yeah. I mean, it wasn't too long. Like, I enjoyed the match, but it didn't need to be as long as it was. We had a couple of uh, segments backstage, setting up matches, which I'll read here in a moment. Gun Club versus Bear Country. Match is irrelevant. What happened afterwards where Darby ran as fast as humanly possible and wiped out Austin Gunn on the ramp. Like, if we never see Austin Gunn again, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know that how was... he stood up after this this uh, this attack. That was Darby's tribute to the fan that attacked Seth. I mean, this was a great misdirection because of the way they had it, the shadow of the light. You know, you didn't see Darby come out pasting until the last minute, and Austin sold it like a champ when ass over tea kettle. It was fantastic, a great visual. All right, I'm going to uh, check something out here. Uh-oh. Yeah, okay, so let me... You got business happening. Uh, not really. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, in the Civil War, yes, you're gonna learn something. Come sit on the learning tree. In the Civil War, a cannonball could weigh as much, I believe it says here, as 42 pounds. PCO? A cannon like a Napoleon with a bore diameter of 4.62 inches could shoot a solid iron ball that would weigh about 12 pounds, but a cannon with a bore diameter of 7.02 inches uh, could shoot a ball that weighed as much as uh, as 42 pounds. So, you know how many people were killed by cannonballs in the Civil War? Well, right. Darby Allen weighs as much as uh, f- at least four cannonballs, and, uh, and he hit this Austin gun literally, I'm not even joking, like he got shot out of a cannon. So, I can't believe that guy's alive. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Uh, where were we? Oh, yes, cannonballs. Cannonballs. Oh, yeah. All right, we had a bunch of other segments, including Leo Rush and Dante backstage with Team Taz, and Team Taz wants Dante to sign, and Leo Rush grabs a pen. He ain't sign it, and then Dante grabs the pen back and signs. I think it's a swerve, but we'll mm. see. I don't think Dante is is leaving Leo Rush. They're such a great team. Like, this would be foolish, in my opinion. But Let me ask you a question, though, real quick. Mm. How was Ricky Starks' neck, to your knowledge? Because I know he did get back, obviously, and he wrestled and everything. And I, But I'm, I'm curious, too. He is doing a lot of announcing. And, you know, if you do want to add another person to that team, if Starks is not going to be in the ring... It might be a good way to do it, I guess. That would be the only thing that I could think of other than a swerve planned out by Leo Rush, which I I believe that's what it's going to be, too. But that's the only other thing I could think of other than that is they well, need somebody to kind of be a part of that threesome. Well, when is the last time that you saw... I mean, they actually make jokes about MGF wrestling three times a year. And uh, Hook's never worked. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, well, you know, yeah, but even, even with the cycling of look guys, at Thunder Rosa, I mean, she had like two matches on dynamite in four months or something like that. So I, I think he's fine. The, the official word is he's fine. So, well, that's why I, I think again, he's I, fine. Okay. That's why even with cycling of guys, he has not been on dark or, or, uh, elevation to my knowledge. That's why I was curious about that. Whereas other people, when they like the gun club, I mean, when they showed the gun club's record, it was like what, 45 and seven or something whatever the it was it was an amazing amount but it's oh it's all on the shows all on he worked on dark this week 
All on the second. Oh, did he really? Okay, yeah. well, good. Okay. Thank Again, you, if DJ. that's the case, then if that's you know, if there's no problem with him, then I can't believe that it's not going to be a swerve because otherwise, why would you keep moving Dante around? It, it just it kind of just damages him as a personality. I don't think they are going to move him around. I think this is some sort of wacky swerve, and he's going to. Well, end up... yeah. We had Thunder Rosa beating Jamie Hader. Crowd was nuts for this match, and uh, it was a good match and. Uh, Britt Baker accidentally super kicked Hater and then Rosa pinned her. So it's Thunder Rosa and Jade Cargill uh, in the semifinals of this tournament. And uh, this led to a very sad Friendsgiving with Britt Baker and Rebel. And not only that, Tony Schiavone showed a video of a returning Riho who faces Britt Baker tonight on uh, on Rampage. And if Riho wins, Britt Baker must give her a championship match. Brian Danielson beat Colt Cabana, had a had a good match. Wish it would have been longer, but it was good for what it was. And, of course, Daniel Bryan won, Brian Danielson. And then he announced that next week they're going to be in Atlanta. He knows there are Dark Order members from Atlanta. And so one of them is going to get their head kicked in. And no, Anna everyone, Jay. I don't think it's Anna J. Come on. <laughs> Golly. You know what, though? I kind of would get a kick out of that, her actually stepping up or something like that. It would actually be uh, probably some pretty good TV if he does get in his face or something like that before. I guess, who would it be? Alan Angels, I guess, would be the person from Atlanta, or is, is 10 Pre- Preston Vance from down there? I'm not sure. But what I am sure about is the lineup for Rampage tonight. Because the show was taped. We've got Eddie <laughs> Kingston, Daniel Garcia... Britt Baker and Riho, and Adam Cole and Bobby Fish versus Orange Cassidy and Wheeler Yuta. What do you think of this lineup? It's a pretty damn good lineup. Anytime you got Eddie Kingston, that's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Kingston also going to be at the uh, at the uh, January 23rd Hammerstein Ball Run. <laughs> you are the absolute worst host I've ever seen in my life. No, the problem Golly. is the problem is your video. I producer. threw to you so that I could sneeze while you talked, and you couldn't help but laugh about it. Well, I was going to fill in, but I can't help it because it got caught on video, and everybody started making fun of you. So I just I, I had to make a giggle. Doesn't there. matter but if it's on <laughs> video; it's not on audio and then we had malachi black on drade ftr (laughs) against cody rhodes in the death triangle or as we like to call it the death triangle very very good match cody was hated threw his belt in the crowd they threw it back which is like it's too bad the belt has that metal clip on the end and that sharp thing that you uh the uh they call it a tang buckle too bad it's, it's got that thing because uh man that's a great spot when you throw well, your gimmick in the crowd and the crowd, crowd chants throw it back and then you throw it back and everyone pops huge. The funny thing about this show is I can't remember. I think it was Pac. But, like, these fans, th- here's the thing. I, we talk about Cody all the time. Oh, he's got to turn, blah, blah, blah. No, he doesn't. And if he does, it's, it, listen, these fans have so much fun booing Cody that literally – the the best reaction, and this had all sorts of high flying and big stars and Malachi Black. They had the most fun booing Cody and cheering when that belt got thrown back in the ring. And they had so much fun booing him and cheering him getting beaten up that he made a hot tag to Pac and the crowd died. Because they were like angry that they couldn't yell and scream at Cody anymore. So anyway, I thought this match was was great. And uh, Jose got in the ring. Tully and Arn were about to square up, but they decided they don't like Jose more, so they beat him up. And then uh, Abrahantes beat him up. So I think Jose might be history because that was kind of weird. And then uh, Black sprayed the mist at Pac. Andrade hit the hammerlock. DDT pinned him. Clearly this feud must continue. I thought this was an excellent show. Oh, my God, yeah. I, I absolutely thought it was. And, again, you know, some of the stuff that was a little bit down, there was so much else to make up for it. So I, people are going to look at the rating. But, again, it must be mentioned that 
Thanksgiving Eve for them is very bad because, number one, it's travel day for a lot of people. Two, they have a lot of young people that watch the show, and those people go out. They come back from college. They're going out with their friends. They're going out to bars, whatever it's going to be. And they have taken a hit every year, but that is not indicative of the quality of this show and how they moved everything going forward. So I thought it was a, I thought it was a very, very good show. You know, Cody with that belt, it was so close to John Cena. In the, on the ECW show against RVD where they threw the hat back in and he came right back in the ring. It, it was close to that, but unfortunately the belt hit the ropes and unfortunately it almost hit Aubrey as well too. So that's the only problem with obviously doing something like that is you, you don't want to see somebody get hurt in a stupid way for a stupid reason. Should note, by the way, that going up on my Twitter as we speak... Actually, it was as Mike spoke, is uh, the third of four Brian and Vinny co host auctions. Uh, the final two will only be up for three days. So if you would like to bid, you've got to go now. Uh, the first one sold for $4,500, the second one sold for $3,500. All proceeds go to Whale Scout, registered 501c3 nonprofit. You're paying for habitat restoration and tools and everything that goes along with restoring habitat so check it out everybody on my twitter at brian alvarez guys want to hear about the more of this nxt show Uh, i'll make it quick champa beat grayson waller champa's awesome match was uh it's all right i mean grayson waller has good moments and bad moments he's still he's still green but the good stuff looked good and the bad stuff was fine because champa was in there we had uh, Toxic Attraction in Dakota Kai. They did this segment that's, like, mind-boggling. You just got to watch it. That's all I'll say. Just watch this segment they had backstage. We had Cameron Grimes doing a video with Duke Hudson. They are doing a hair versus hair match in War Games, and I presume that Duke Hudson is, is losing. Uh, they did uh, chop off some of Grimes' uh, beard and hair, but, like, it was just like the the tips of the hair and part of the beard. So he actually looks a thousand times better now. Uh, you don't need to cut it all off. I mean, he was maybe a little scraggly, uh, but looks way better now. So hopefully they don't just shave it all off of this pay-per-view. But I put nothing past him. But based on the fact that he's the baby face, he'll already cut off some of his hair. I think that he's probably going to end up beating Duke Hudson. We had uh, Casey Catanzaro and Kane Carter beating Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada. With all due respect, it was horrible. And uh, Casey Catanzaro pinned Indy Hartwell. Santos Escobar beat Malik Blade. We had a Cora Jade Mandy Rose non title match where, uh, you know, the, the lip service, I've talked about it before. We got to get these young women over. We want young stars that we can push. Cora Jade goes in there and she is just absolutely defeated, beaten, beaten, beaten 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 kaylee ray interferes and she gets a roll-up win and flees <laughs> this is how we get over our new young talent slip on a banana peel wins uh joe gacy promo where he accused roderick strong of uh of fat shaming by being the uh cruiserweight champion it's roderick's fault that's the name of the belt that he won so they're gonna have a match at the pay-per-view where the cruiserweight title is on the line Although Joe Gacy is not a cruiserweight. So Joe Gacy and Powder there, the guy with him, uh, Parker Bordreau or whatever, whatever his new name is here, they're the baby faces in this? Uh, no. The heels are accusing the baby face of fat shaming. So. Yes. <sighs> oh, it sucks. Mightily. We had Ivy Nile beating Ulyssa Leon, which was a fun little squash match. Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs beat the grizzled young vets because, of oh. course, they did. Well, But we're trying to get young guys over. Young guys, but the funny yeah. thing is, if you look at the numbers, it ain't working. But we got to keep trying. And then uh, the main event was Carmelo Hayes beating Pete Dunne and Johnny Gargano in a triple threat when he pinned Johnny Gargano. Uh, Gargano, has, uh, his contract expires or it was expiring before War Games, but he signed like a three-day extension or something like that, so he's going to stay at least through War Games. Obviously, they want him to sign long-term, but he has not done so yet, so we will see what the future is of Johnny Gargano. 
And I would, you know, it could be one of those deals where, you know, if, if things aren't going well, they beat him. If things are going well, he wins. It could be something like that at the pay-per-view or it could have nothing to do with anything. But uh, that's the War Games match. Old school versus new school. Coming up on Pay-Per-View and Peacock. I want you to ask Lance about how many crazy spots he, he thinks he'll see in this War Games match because I'm sure he is looking at the combined uh, experience level of some of the people in that match and absolutely cringing, let alone looking at the women's side and absolutely cringing over there at that too. Sounds like I uh, did most of that review on Wednesday, but you know what? There was a long Thanksgiving in between filled with... Are uh, you okay, by the drinking. way? You right? Yeah, I was sneezing. I know. You keep sneezing nonstop here. You I got didn't a sneeze or... nonstop. I sneezed one time. Uh, a couple times now. Let's Look talk about um, Let's talk about these uh, text messages. Thought the Punk MGF segment was great. I had no idea it was, quote, long. Punk QT was too long, however. Should have been more of a squash after that promo. And considering QT is a jobber and Punk is top tier, the length and competitiveness of that match took some shine off that promo battle for me. I'm not going to argue that. Yeah, Probably should have been quicker. Down. But... <laughs> See, I like watching uh, Punk and QT work. That's the problem. Well, and the thing is, that's the damnedest thing is QT is great, but the problem was just the Camarodo and, and and all that stuff and that interference. Like, that's where, to me, that was all a little bit superfluous. It, it could have been a little bit shorter, a little bit tighter without all that stuff. And, again, you had so much Punk at the beginning, I didn't think the match needed to go that long. This person says, hey, Brian, how much is it for the Black Friday sale again, and what time does it go until? Well, funny you should ask. 720 area code. It's three ninety nine, and it goes from now until 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern. So go! WrestlingObserver.com. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hello. It's here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And I'm not kidding, that was a real text. I know people don't believe me, but it actually was. I have never made up a text on this show ever. Which, I don't know if that's good or bad. Mm. I was going to say, would you want to take credit for some of the ones we've had? In my view, this person says, the QT versus Punk match was a bit longer because it proved there was some truth to MGF's promo, i.e. that Punk is taking longer to beat people that he should be defeating more quickly. Eh. Yeah, they certainly did tell that story as a possibility. Yeah, but here's the thing, I, and I get that, but, like, if Punk beats him in eight minutes, like, you can make a case that he he could have beaten QT a lot quicker. He's the best in the world. That's what he says he is, former multiple-time world champion, biggest guy in the business, all that sort of stuff. I mean, so, again, it didn't still did not have to go that long to even tell that story that person wanted, or what they're trying to say, I guess. This person says, NXT, New Blood Rising. <laughs> And also, is Duke Hudson a barber now? He was sitting in front of nothing but grooming products. I think that he's a, what do they call it, like a, a worldly man. He's a, he's a poker player, and he's a, a barber, and he's a wrestler, a renaissance man. Ah, That's yes. what Duke Hudson is. Renaissance Hudson. Now, that's a name. A collection of manscaping products to, uh, to try to scare and intimidate Cameron Grimes. Well, anyway, we're out of time, everybody. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you're enjoying your Black Friday. If you're enjoying your Black Friday but you have three ninety nine, you better jump over to WrestlingObserver.com and take us up on this offer because at 9 o'clock Pacific Midnight Eastern tonight, it's done. So WrestlingObserver.com is the address. It's right up there at the top. Unlimited access, $3.99 for a full month, 13,000 archive shows, Observer newsletters, and more. And my Twitter's got all the Whale Scout stuff. we got two auctions left for co-host spots. Bunch of other great things as well. And that's it, everybody. Have a great weekend. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.